Hello and welcome once again to INSEAD's LeaderCast series. My name is Charles Galenick, I'm the Dean of the Executive MBA. It's a pleasure to have our LeaderCast take place today in Singapore in the Asian context and it's a particular pleasure to have with us Wayne Dai, who is the founder, president, chairman and CEO of Veris Silicon Holdings in China. He will be interviewed today by Phil Anderson, who is our alumni fund chaired professor of entrepreneurship and of course the topic is leadership in the Chinese context. Welcome. Wayne uh, went over from China to the United States as one of the first batch of people to get a, a graduate education in the USA, became a successful university professor and a serial entrepreneur. Now he has started a company in China that is very intellectual property intensive. China is famous for making hardware inexpensively. Wayne Dai's company is pioneering the concept that you can design the most sophisticated custom integrated circuits in China. Wayne, welcome to NCI today. Thank you for inviting me here. When you set up Veris Silicon Holdings, semiconductor industry experts from Taiwan told you that you could make boxes in China, but not design circuits, not because of lack of know-how, but because of lack of management systems and discipline. Starting a semiconductor design company in China, what made you decide, yes, you would bet on China? I think, um, uh, obviously, China have large talent pools. Uh, the most important is the market. If you don't have money, you'll get money. If you don't have technology, you'll get technology. The key thing is the mar market job is driven and also the large talent pools. So of course, it takes a while to bring to that standard what Taiwan can do or Japan can do. But I think eventually, I believe, um, we will reach to that point. And you have found that you can have management systems and discipline that fit a high-tech Silicon Valley-like company in China. Yes, I think uh, it's very important to create from day one this international company. Uh, there's many China companies, once they make lots of money, they say, I want to be internationalized, so I bought some company, buy some company in Europe. But that, that will not bring the change of company cultures. Um, so, I think, for example, our receptionists have stock options also. So all communication in English, and we almost every day, we have visitors right, from the US, from Europe, from Japan. So we're very used to communicate uh, as international companies. Did you set out to create a company that would be, from a management point of view, something of a fusion of the best of Silicon Valley and the best of China? Yes, I think the, um, for example, if we tell Japanese companies say we have China technology, China cost, they will say no. If we tell them we have U.S. technology, China cost, they say great, they got the best deal, right? So this company is outsourcing. So outsourcing by definition, outsourcing from outside of China to China, not China to China. So by definition, our most custom outside of China, right? If we cannot communicate or uh, don't have same culture uh, or trust from company outside China, probably we cannot be in business like that today. You have said before that your philosophy is to hire two people who are paid the same as three people and do the work of four people. That requires the very best talent that you can find. Where do you find such people and how do you get them to join you at Vera Silicon? Yes, I think the um, actually uh, have high tech company in Shanghai is very challenging. Lots of multinational company come to Shanghai and say, in six months I have to hire 50 people at all costs. So not only increase salary, sometimes they help the down payment. So it's very, very difficult. So some people say I should move to some, some very far away. But however, I think the, from all the province of China, Right, people, the best choice for the living for the kids' education is Shanghai, right? So, so yeah, yes, it's challenging, but also I think we have a bigger pool to draw from. So, if you really compare their good culture, actually, is the best place in Shanghai because you can, you can have a bigger pool to draw from. So, high tech is not like a shoe factory or those bench factory. You can count exactly the productivity, you lower, low the cost. That, that, that's very clear return on investment. But high tech company, if you ask, sometimes people ask, what's your average salary? I think that's the wrong question to ask. It's very easy. 
one people and two people per productivity is very easy. So I think rather we should get the best people you can, especially in China, because you don't have a big pool to join to begin with, right? So I think uh, uh, the best choice, that's why I say, is, is uh, you pay three people salary for two people. I think it's very, not that difficult for them to produce four people work, and they are very happy, right? and the company also very productive. Right? And, and also, it's very important, the A player may hire B players, but B players at best hire C players. They will not hire another BBB players because they're, they're not secure. So the company start with B play, they hire C play, C play, high D play, then company gone. So it's very important you have good people to begin with, the, the core team, at all costs. So that, that's how to make the company. They were very picky, very selective in the hiring. Why would a high quality technical professional choose VeriSilicon over a multinational company or over one of China's famous technical companies like Huawei or Hire perhaps? Yes, I think um, I believe there's many Taiwanese companies. I have m many good engineers from com uh, Taiwanese companies. They have very good training. However, some the culture, they're very good ma uh, managing the manufacturing facility in Shenzhen. Right? They have all the rules. But you cannot manage high tech people that manage the, the, the people who work on the shoe factory, for example. So the culture is quite different. You really give them creativity, you need trust. You have to manage it by culture rather than manage it by power, for example. Right? So that's quite a different culture, I believe. So that that usually their first choice of the, the company from the US. The the, U, the, the US like come second is the Europe. Right. Then maybe may, may, maybe Japan, then Taiwan company. Not for our high tech field. Foreign multinationals have tended to hire people who like sea turtles are returning to China from abroad or they like to hire fresh university graduates from the top universities in China. You have pursued a different philosophy. What kind of people do you try to hire and why have you made a different choice from the multinationals? Yes, China has many top, top universities. You can hire people with very good grades. However, they have, uh, really don't have experience. They all, right, start from young, they always take a test and that's how they grow up. So they don't know what they're, they're going to do. So it's mentally not mature what they're doing. Sometimes expectation too high, right? So I think the, uh, when the early stage, the company, last five years, we don't have the time right, to training those people. So now we start to have, once, once after you have certain infrastructures. So I think uh, our philosophy has been the early few years, we never hired fresh graduate, doesn't matter which university, which degree you have. We hire people at least two years, right? Hopefully by that time they know what they're doing. Uh, also have proven how good uh, their working attitude is, especially given right now China one kiss policy. So we will not hire someone who never change job, but we also will not hire someone who changes so many times. There's an optimal number, how many times they, they, they change the job. Why have you chosen to focus on domestic talent instead of people who are returning from abroad? Yeah, I think we, um, uh, if we want, you want to be the world-class company, you need world-class coach, work on world-class project. Definitely we need a coach. Uh, some of coaches have to be from the United States, from, from abroad. However, majority of people have to be local in the US. And even those people left China 10 years ago, right? After 10 years, the culture is quite different. When they come back, uh, you need to be very careful. Some people may didn't get a chance to stop a company in the U.S. or don't have the guts to do that. Or after those t 10 years, they couldn't become a manager. So they come back because uh, uh, ego, personal ego, right? Because they say, oh, that's the chance I become manager or being stopped. But th that, that doesn't work. Right. So, especially given local talent grew up very fast. So we need to be very clear. We need to lo lo localize. All like most challenge is the middle level manage. You can import top manage few from outside, but you cannot import the middle level manage. They all have to grow locally. Turnover is a constant problem in China. 
People always seem to be getting offers at a higher salary. And it's also illegal to make staff work overtime. They have to volunteer to do that. How is it that you retain and motivate your key staff with those constraints in China? Yeah, for high tech, sometimes you have deadlines or whatever. It's, it's not intentionally ask them to do overtime all the time, but sometimes when tape out, chip tape out, right? There's sometimes you need the overtime. So I think most of our engineers, they have do overtime voluntary. Right? We not demand them to do the overtime. However, we provide, for example, we lose all the gyms during the weekends to exercise. Uh, we have tea, tea time at 4 o'clock every day. Um, for example, we have those tours, uh, eight days in Thailand, Hong Kong, with families. All our year-end party, usually company don't have a family. We all uh, celebrate with family, kind of show us, us appreciation, their support over the years. So uh, we do, and also we're flexible. If sometimes they have personal things, right, we let them day off sometimes because because they did the main, uh, main overtime work. So, so we, we are quite flexible and uh, um, let them feel like this, they're motivated to do so. So every day in the morning, they're looking forward to the work. Is there any one big thing that you do to keep people or is it more a lot of little things? Yeah, there's many uh, little, little things you let them feel that you care about them. For example, um, when we uh, remodeled the office, when I went walk into the showroom, the first thing they showed me is my table. I said the most important piece of furniture is my employee's chair. So we have very good chair, same price as my chair. Now that's of course, we have 150 people. There's a lot of cost. But that's the best one, like your, the, the bed, the mattress is the most important piece of furniture in your home because they have to sit there for eight hours, 10 hours. So those little things people show to people, we really care about them. Food seems very important in China. You've gone to some trouble to make sure you have a high quality cafeteria, setting up two vendors in competition, one with another. Why is that such an important element of your culture? Yeah, every time I return to Shanghai, the first thing is I need to try the food. Because how good the lunch, they will have the whole afternoon productivity. Um, and. Uh, so after a while, we decided we should have some competitions, right? We put lots of emphasis. Now, of course, we provide the free lunch and also deliver dinner if they go to overtime. But that's, we always keep changing, keep improving. Uh, we want to make sure they really had good quality, quality of lunch. Chinese executives often tell us that developing a sense of trust and loyalty can be harder in a Chinese environment than a Western environment. What do you do to build trust and loyalty in your workforce? Yeah, I think, uh, um, so for example, um, every quarter, we have quarterly communication, right? Even though I travel all the place, we have Japan office, we have Nice office, we have many, many office. But at once a quarter, I have a whole company in the room. I will tell them the numbers, so what exactly, right, the profitabilities, what the major achievement, or the challenges communicate openly to the whole team. And we have open section and anyone can raise, doesn't matter how small, whatever concern, in front of everyone. At the beginning, it's difficult. People don't want to offend some a manager, or, right? After a while, uh, people get used to it. You won't let them speed up, right? So, but sometimes for Asian culture, they don't want openly speak all those issues. And also we take notes the second time, the next quarter, we first need to review all the issues people raised, how, how we did, what we have solved, what we're gonna do. So after a while, people feel you are very open, you listen to them, right? And they really care about them, so they gradually will build the trust. You emphasize the importance of a strong corporate culture. What is VeriSilicon's culture and how do you keep it strong? Is it Silicon Valley, China, or a little bit of both? Yes, I think you cannot be purely American culture or Chinese culture, right? You can have the, uh, for example, I'm taught the openness. Even the Asian people in the U.S. sometimes do the media, you can say they usually not speak, right? There's some good part of it. So we have to come, this, they, they can open in front of everyone to raise those issues. That's really American culture, right? The stock option, the other things. 
but also there's also some uh, good part of the Chinese, Chinese culture also they work very hard and uh, they build a personal relation with the managers make sure they care about employees very close right so so they, 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 those are some good uh, good uh, cultures for so I think this uh, type of we still try to uh, because we have Europe also we have Japan also. Japan has different culture also right so we are in the process of see how we can do a fusion or the take all the good elements from each, each part of the world. If I were to ask one of your key employees, what is the corporate culture at VeriSilicon? What are the values? What does the company stand for? Why do you work here? What do you think they would say? What, what is distinctive about your, your company's culture? Yeah, I think it's very important. Um, they, um, is when they, every day they go to work, is not, they just work for the managers or for company, they also work for themselves. Um, yes, salary is important, but most important is a career path, right? Doesn't matter what I, high, what I pay, there's always someone can pay high. There's no way you can always win the race. But some some kind of project, very visible international, big companies project, and some of the environment, actually, it's not easy for them to find in the other place. So they really like the culture, the openness, the trust, right? And they can walk to my office there to talk to me directly for any time. You do some unusual things. You have a sculpture park in front of your building. You sponsor a string orchestra. You require all of the emails in the company to be in English. How do those kinds of things reinforce the culture that you're trying to build? Yes, I think um, for uh, the IC design like a software, this kind of art, right? Not necessarily like a, like a, like a science. You need quite a lot of imaginations. Now, during the lunch time, you take the short walk um, around the park and get fresh air, and people communicate. That, that that's very important. Of course, some other companies say each lunch they have a sleeping bag, right next to the table, take the nap. But I think a more active way is to take a walk outside around this park. Um, I think few people feel, have fresh airs and right, get refreshed. Yeah. Why the string orchestra? So I think um, uh, is there's many high tech companies. Very few high tech companies sponsor con con concerts. So we invite all the employees. And also all the major customers, CEOs, even their fa even their families. And you're trying to reinforce this notion yes. that what we do is as much an art as it is a science. Yeah, and also that's more international. But they only did the once. That's the Vienna Street only did once nine in Shanghai. Right. Why Why are you so insistent on English for emails? Yeah, because I like think I say we our most customers outside. Sometimes we may send a small team stay in Italy for three months. They're on their own, right, or Japan. And uh, we communicate conference calls. Sometimes it's hard to put, for them to get out of the country, but we have conference call every day. So we have to speak. In, so we, this is also, actually we have uh, uh, some English training course for the for project leaders to train them the, the, the English skill, yeah. So it sounds as though what you're trying to do is communicate to people we're an international company, our, our customers are international, and that's why we do things this way. Yes. You have opened an office in Nice, France, mm -hmm. and you have recently acquired a firm in Dallas, Texas. How do you integrate non-Chinese people into a Chinese company with the culture that you're building at VeriSilicon? Yeah, the reason we opened Nice, not like, of course, Nice is a very nice place. It's not because I like the nice place, because when I have one open uh, office, I, in Europe, you have uh, uh, English speech, right, speech, and also the English, German, and French. Very difficult to cover all the religions with also religions. So someone told me if you want only one sales office, the best to find Italian living friends speak good English. They kind of you can cover more, 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 most of them. Actually, we did because there's a TI and other high tech companies. Um, for the dollars ones. Um, actually, this uh, acquisition six, seven months ago, this uh, one division from ASL Logic, which is probably the pioneer in our field AC design 25 years ago. 
Um, that, that's very challenging. So, so integrate Shanghai with California is quite challenging. Shanghai with uh, the dollars, with taxes, even more challenging, right, because of the courage. I remember in, within two weeks after merge, I bring all the key people, architect, manager to Shanghai. Many of them don't have passport. They never get out of country before. Some people bring suitcase of the water and the food to Shanghai. And when they go back, they, don't, they, they couldn't bring the beef back. They don't know what to do with this. Because, so, um, so we start from that, that point. And I remember the second night, I ran a Boeing one Pro River. Have Italian people to, give, to teach a wine, the wine testing on the boat. Have you found it more difficult or less difficult than you expected to integrate a group of Americans into your company? Yeah, I think um, it actually at the beginning I was worried, given right, given they never get our country before, their image of China is quite totally uh, different. Um, but after, uh, because the merge, two thirds of the merge actually failed, the special cross ball merge. First six months very critical. So actually we did a few things. I have to do a few things, otherwise cannot do. If we don't merge, both sides cannot fit it. So we demonstrate, right, uh, those achievements, that therefore they respect the Shanghai team. Actually we respect each other, right? So I think we, now from their heart they would think, very sick is a better home than else logic. If you were to give advice to one of our audience who's interested in either starting a company or opening a division in China that has a Silicon Valley-like culture, what's the one most important piece of advice that you would give them based on your experience? Yeah, I think the, at the very beginning, they had to find the leader, hopefully the localized. That's very critical, right? So uh, first English core core team, right? So uh, at all costs, right? Once this had to be a AA players, that team had to be lo localized, right? So otherwise, I mean, if it has a wrong start point, then it's very difficult to grow the companies. What, what should our audience look for in that local leader that gets a new division or a company off the ground in China? Yes, first, First of all, I think it should be localized, much better. I think that there's some big companies that usually send people from U.S. I think, of course, you sometimes you look, but you have to at least find another person, localized. Uh, the people from outside could be in a transition period. As soon as the low local people are ready, you should let that person. So that person is very critical to keep the English team. English have to be a team. Right. That person not only taken technically, it, ideally you had to be from the technical side, and also has some working experience, and uh, uh, work for some international companies. The better if they have uh, some training like MBAs, right? There's many all offering right now in China, so they also get the formal trainings. Definitely, you need to speak good English for them. I believe right now. Compared with five years ago, there's many choice. Wayne, thank you for joining us today and sharing your insights. Okay, thank you.